Well, hello and welcome. I've got a problem here that I think is really, really cool because there's lots of different ways to solve this one. I picked one way in particular because it's got a, well, a little bit of a twist and a surprise that I'll share with you here in just a second. But here are the details of the problem so you can try it on your own first. We've got this square, ABCD. It's got an area of 89. It's got a small little square in the middle with an area of 9. And our job is to find the measurement of the angle marked X degrees here in the bottom left-hand corner. So if you'd like to try it on your own, go ahead and pause the video now. If you get it, let me know. If you had some fun, let me know. Man, if you learned something new, let me know. I'm going to spoil it right now because I'm going to give you my game plan. So go ahead and pause it, try it on your own. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to write an equation for the area of the, tra of the square ABCD as being the sum of the small square plus these four triangles. And then I'm going to see if I can simplify that and isolate the angle X. And spoiler alert, we're going to end up using the double angle formula. So if you tried it on your own and you got stuck, maybe this is enough information to get you unstuck. So go ahead and dive into it and try it now. And as I run through this, I'm going to chase down a couple little facts that we're going to substitute. I'll leave timestamps, so if you're really familiar with some of those things, you can go ahead and navigate past those. So be sure to check the timestamps below, and, well, here we go. All right, so writing the equation for the square ABCD. The square is 89, so that would be 9 plus these 4 triangles like this one right here, BDC. Now, they do all look the same, but let's not make assumptions like that because that's where we get into trouble. It might seem fairly obvious, but let's go ahead and state it just to make sure. All right, so they're all right triangles because we've got a square there in the middle and angle X and angle Y, well, they're complementary because it's a right triangle, so these other two have to add up to 90. Now, because we have a square, BC and DC, DC and BC, they are perpendicular, so Y and Z are also complementary. That means that X and Z are exactly the same. And we could chase that same idea all the way around the square to show that all of these triangles, all four of them, are exactly the same as triangle B, C, D. All right, so let's go ahead and assume that this is true now. Well, not even assume. We've justified it. And let's simplify it by subtracting 9 from both sides. And then let's go ahead and divide both sides by 4. So we're going to get that the area of triangle B, D, C is, of course, 20 square units, whatever those happen to be. Now, let's go ahead and write our formula for the area of a right triangle, one-half base times height, and we can so ahead and go ahead and get rid of that one-half, so 40 is equal to the product of the base times the height. Now, the base, well, that's DC, and the height, well, that's BD. So we've got the base and the height right there, and let's go ahead and see now if we can express those lengths in terms of angle X by using some trig. So we know sine of angle X, that's opposite over hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, well, that's going to be the square root of 89. So we have DC over the square root of 89. The reason it's the square root of 89 is because the area of the square was 89. So taking the square root, you find that the each side is square root of 89. So we can simplify that for DC so that we can later substitute it. Let's do the same thing for BD cosine of angle X, well, that would be the adjacent side, which is BD, divided by the hypotenuse, which is square root of 89. Multiplying again, so we can isolate BD and then go ahead and substitute those two things into uh, 1 half B times H. So here's what we got. Eight, square root of 89 si sine of X times square root of 89 cosine of X. All those things are multiplying, so let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. Square root of 89 times itself is 89. And let's go ahead and divide both sides by 89. So we get 40 over 89 is equal to sine of the angle X times cosine of the angle X. When I did this problem, this is where I got stuck. I've was kind of stumped. I didn't know what to do, and I did not recognize that I could actually do a substitution right here. Here's where I didn't. Here's what I didn't recognize. Just because the little two wasn't there, we could use the double angle formula. So the sine of double the value of x is equal to two times sine of x cosine of x. So I went ahead and substituted it like that. If you don't see where sine of two x divided by two comes from, let's just make sure that's a hundred percent clear. Right, So the double angle identity is the sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So all you got to do is divide both sides by 2, and there you go. Sine x times cosine of x is equal to sine of 2x divided by 2. So we went ahead and substituted just like that. Man, 
now we're almost done. But let's go ahead and make sure that you know where this comes from. I think it's a good opportunity to explore the double angle formula or double angle identity. All right. So sine of 2x is equal to 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. So let's go ahead and start off with a right triangle. Hypotenuse is 1. Let's say this angle over here on the left is x, which makes the other angle 90 minus x. So if we take the sine of x, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Since the hypotenuse is 1, we're going to say the distance from here to here is just sine of x. All right. Now, we're going to have to use this little fact here in a little bit. The sine of 90 minus x is equal to cosine of x. Now, that's a basic trig um, fact, but maybe that's not 100% clear, so let's just go ahead and justify it real quick. The sine of this angle right here is opposite over 1, right? All right, so then the opposite of that angle is the sine of 90 minus x. So if this side is sine of x, then this side right here is the sine of 90 minus x. Now let's talk about the cosine of x. Cosine of x is the adjacent side divided by 1. Right, And the adjacent side is sine of 90 minus x. So cosine of x is equal to the sine of 90 minus x. All right, so we're going to use that in just a second. But now let's go ahead and take our triangle, double it, and make a larger isosceles triangle like this. That makes this angle 2x, right? And this side that's opposite of 2x, 2 times the sine of x. Sine of x plus sine of x is 2 times the sine of x. Now, we no longer have a... Right triangle, so we're going to use the sine rule. If you're not familiar with how that works, I made a video where I derived it so you can see where it comes from. I'll leave a link in the description below, but let's go ahead and use it here. We've got the sine of A divided by A, and the sine and the angle are opposites is equal to, well, another pair of angle and opposite side. So let's go ahead and clean up some space right here, and let's say that the 2x is angle A, which makes 2 times the sine of x side A. Let's plug those in. Let's do the same exact treatment for B, angle B and side B. So we'll, we're going to say that 90 minus X is angle B, which makes its opposite side equal to 1, right? And here's where we're going to use this identity right here. Sine of 90 minus X is just cosine of X. So let's substitute that. And dividing by 1, we can clean that up, right? Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the sine of x, and this is the identity that we used. Sine of 2x divided by 2 is equal to sine of x cosine of x. So going back to our original equation, then the stuff we were working on right here, sine of x cosine of x is equal to sine of 2x divided by 2. So let's go ahead and substitute that back in, and let's finish solving it. Let's multiply both sides by 2, 80 over 89 is equal to the sine of 2x. Take the arc sine of both sides, so 2x is going to be equal to 64 degrees. It's 64.010 something, really close to 64. So we're going to go ahead and round it, divide by 2, so we can see that 32 degrees is what x is equal to. So looking at our picture, we know that angle is 32 degrees. Let's go ahead and recap what we did just to make sure it's all clear. Right? We started off with the area of the square being 89 and the square being this little square plus the four triangles. And we simplified that, and then we said that, well, one-half base times height, that's the triangle. And we went ahead and used some trig to write the an expression for those sides, and we simplified it. We did a substitution with the double angle formula, and then just used inverse operations from there. Took the arc sine of both sides, and we found that 2 times the angle was 64, leaving us with 32 degrees. Man. I think that was pretty cool. That was a surprising little twist and turn in that solution that I really enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.